Hello, everybody. How are you? Can you hear me okay out there? Cool. Hopefully you can. Um, if uh, Great. You're starting to respond. Awesome. Um, welcome. I am Davy Stein. I am head of compositing here at Escape Studios, part of Pearson College. And uh, welcome to the Bedroom Skills webinar number four. And um, I've got my camera on here. I'm just going to move the window around. And um, I'm going to be going through some pretty, pretty interesting nuke nodes uh, today and some techniques I think, think you'll find quite interesting and hopefully helpful. So there's a lot of little things I'll be going through, some theory as well as uh, some actual practical techniques. But I hope that you'll be able to get a sense of how to help your shots. And then also, um, you can then review the video later on and go through the specific steps. So I'm not going to be doing um, exactly every step, but you'll see all my settings that you can um, repeat in your own time. So we're going to be going through distorting reality with the matrix node. And uh, as you can kind of uh, guess, and probably as you've read from the um, the page on our website is that uh, yes, I well, I'm not the oracle. <laughs> I wish I could say I was. That would be uh, quite a title to say. But um, I did work on the Matrix Two and Three, the Matrix uh, Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions, which was a lot of fun. It was intense work, um, but I was pretty happy with the visuals at the end. Stories are different, you know, <laughs> whether you like it or not. I enjoyed it for what it was, but it was a great project to work on. So. So some of these techniques that you'll be seeing today, um, certainly using the matrix node and all variations of, were certainly used in that film and uh, certainly quite a lot of other films. So I hope it will be something that will be handy. So um, what I'm going to do then is um, go through kind of what we're starting with and then we'll jump right into Nuke straight away. So I'm just going to minimize this here. So as you can see, I'm right in Nuke here, and uh, I'm just running uh, 9.0 right now. So uh, hopefully version 10 will be out very soon. That's that's the rumor. But right now I'm just running one of the release versions, and hopefully you can see my cursor as well, so you'll be able to follow my settings. But basically, oh, hold on a second. Let me just turn my camera off. Um, so I'm just going to turn my camera off so that uh, you can see my screen full. And oops, there we go. <laughs> Turn it off. Okay, there we go. And you should just hear me. Um, and uh, and then I'll be going through the menus here. But um, do chat a question if you've got something relevant, and then I'll cert there'll be some Q and A time at the end as well, where I can answer more specific questions about this technique, or certainly anything else uh, related to compositing or visual effects as well. Okay, so getting started. Um, just to show you, I've got a matrix node here. So this webinar, this uh, technique, is really for those who have had a little bit of experience in Nuke. You've been playing around a bit. You're um, comfortable with the interface. You're comfortable with the node graph and the basic settings. But you kind of want to take your practice a bit further, and you want to be able to add some pretty interesting techniques. Um, again, this will give you a starting point, and then you can always then expand, certainly from that. So I've got a matrix node here, which I've done a 10 by 10 matrix, and I'll explain some of this. So I've, I've kind of overloaded you and give you the big thing first, but we won't be going that deep into it. Um, but I'd like to give you a little bit of background first to start off, because uh, kind of explaining really what the basis and the theory of the matrix node is. So what you've been probably um, used to doing so far is just basically dealing with, say, color corrections or, or something quite commonly called color mapping, um, which just deals with one pixel as your input. Right? Um, and then an output is the result of an equation or an operation um, that's applied to that pixel. So for instance, um, Nuke and After Effects and things like that. There's always math, obviously, involved in the background somewhere. But as nice artists, we have sliders and things like that to um, help us control and adjust our settings. So if I had a red pixel value of, let's say, 0.5, and I just multiply that by 2, so for instance, something like that, 
And um, I don't have, let's see, I'll take that pixel here. I've just sampled literally that pixel, which has a red value that's showing down here at the bottom of the screen at 0.5. And then I just simply multiply that. You can use a grade node as well. So I'm basically brightening it by 2. So then my new pixel value is the original is 0.5, showing down here. And then multiply that by 2 is a value of 1 now. So that's a very simple color mapping process. Input pixel, which is that one in this case, and then output pixel. And an equation, in this case, a multiplication that's being applied directly. So it's only one pixel. It has nothing to do with the surrounding pixels. Obviously, this operation is happening to all the pixels, but it is each individual pixel at each time, the same equation for each. So that's an idea you probably have come across and obviously uh, use very often. You might not have thought about it that way. But here's something that will start to expand your, your brain, so to speak, and have you think about um, different ways. And again, these are things that you do very often, but you probably don't think about what's happening in the background. So there's something called spatial filters or spatial convolution filters, or very simply, convolve filters. And the most common type of convolve filters are, are blurs. So um, just like a, uh, I can get a blur node actually. A blur node is an example of a convolution filter or a spatial filter. So again, something you, you've come across very in a very common way in multiple softwares, but you actually really haven't thought about how is this different? How is its processor, its algorithm, and what's happening in the background, how is that different from, let's say, a multiply and a grade? So basically the difference is these spatial filters here um, are tools that use neighboring pixels surrounding the input pixel to create the new pixel value. So I'll just kind of have this image up here again. Just make a little bit more space over here. Just so I can have the text and you can kind of see. So the input pixel again, just a pixel that I'm choosing right here as we've done before. Now it's not about, <clears throat> excuse me, just that pixel. It's now about surrounding pixels. I'm actually going to choose the middle one because I've got surrounding pixels quite easily. It's now about neighboring pixels, the surrounding pixels um, around that center, in this case, input pixel, that is going to go through the matrix that we'll set up in a second. And then it's going to create a new value for that pixel. So at this point, it's about a weighted average or weighted information. So the surrounding pixels are then also going to determine the new value of that pixel. So it's no longer in, a, in, the, in an absolute equation that's applied to um, one pixel and then an absolute result. It's now that pixel in relation to the others that's going to create the new value for that one. So again, something you might not think of uh, normally, you might have heard the, the term spatial filters or convolve filters. And again, it's very common with most filters, so blur and quite a few of the other nodes that are in the filter tab here are based on spatial convolution filters. So it's a very common type of algorithm that's being used. And the matrix node allows us to do that type of calculation. So basically, in short, then it takes your specific pixel, in this case, let's say this one, and the specific number of adjacent pixels, and then uses a weighted average to the determine the value of the new output pixel. So again, that pixel is going to have a new value in my new final image after I apply a matrix to that. So the specific group of pixels that um, is called a kernel. So this is a 3 by 3 kernel. So as you can see, quite commonly, a 3 by 3, 5 by 5 is used. I showed you before. And the other node, a 10 by 10. And obviously, it can go even further and, and much higher and stuff. So it can go pretty crazy if you'd like. Um, Johnny, at that point, trying to get this back over there. <laughs> Johnny, at that point, um, it's, it's an algorithm. It's a, it's a calculation that you're probably quite familiar with. A lot of programmers who come into visual effects can look at these numbers, so to speak, and just like the movie, visualize, if you will, to some extent, how that new result will be and stuff. So awesome to you. That's not my strong point, but I do basically understand and can use this 
to its to a certain extent. And then there is quite a lot of information on the web as well that I'll tell you about later on.